Hello y'all, I am back again for another video. So I am going to begin this video with a disclaimer. If you are super sensitive about religion, I don't wanna lose you as a subscriber. So I'm advising you ahead of time. If you are overly sensitive about religion in general, and you're not ready for the truth, along with learning some of my opinions, thoughts, and my perspective, along with bringing some facts to this video. If you are not prepared and ready for that, if you are the type of person that you only believe in what some other man has wrote and you have no mind of your own and you're highly being open to being gaslit and not exploring more of the truth. If you are so into your religion that you don't want to, or you refuse to observe the actions of people around you and yourself, friends, relatives, neighbors, if you refuse to acknowledge the bad traits in others and yourself, whether they're in a religion or not, this just ain't the right video for you. Because I'm here to go over, to discuss some of the things I've observed in my life and things that I will experience that I have not even experienced yet. I just will experience these things, okay? So if you're ready, Stay tuned in. If not, tune out of it and come back later. You might not be ready to hear it right now. I'm ready to say it though, because I'm on my exercise bike right now, ready to say what I gotta say about religious narcissists. So, with that being said, Let's go over, okay, religion. What is religion? Religion is a belief in something outside of yourself. I'm not going to say it's an unhealthy thing. I've signed up for religion. And I use the word sign up just as I said it. Sign up. Because that's what you're doing. You're agreeing to a set of rules you're agreeing to what you think is like a contract with the Lord, right? So, however, the problem with some of these things is, for one, you think that's what you need. Okay, so this is the first problem with religion. And this is why people don't get better and can't get better. Number one, your religion won't save you. Your religion alone will not save you from the inevitable. Whether it be you believe in a heaven or hell, the religion alone will not save you from the pit of hell. So that's something I recognize. Number two, I've observed religious people my entire life going from childhood through now, along with observing myself and taking accountability for my own actions. And someone signing up for a religion won't necessarily give them empathy or the ability to feel the pain of another person. And so this is what some people do. Okay, I'm just going to be honest with you. And I figured this out over time. I've had friends that are heavily in a religion. And I've had friends that are not heavily in a religion. Now, this could be the outcome. My friend that is not praying to the Lord and that's not in a religion, he or she may very well go to a hell when they die. 
However, let's speak about our earthly life. Some of my friends that are not heavily involved in a religion would never say and do some of the shit that religious people do. And this is why. It's not their nature. See, this is what a lot of people do that sign up for religions. They're signing up for it subconsciously to develop what you have naturally. Like for example, my grandmother took care of me. She did not need to sign up for a religion to recognize she needed to take care of her grandkids. Now, my mom, on the other hand, may she rest in peace, and my grandmother, she signed up for the religion. And my grandmother said this one time. It's funny how your mama's religion don't make her take care of her kids. And you know what? My grandmother was right about that. Now, my mom, she did take care of us in her way. She was involved. I knew my mom. And actually, my mom is who taught me about religion. Okay, when I was a little girl, you know, because my mom, she was a Pentecostal when I was a little girl. So I remember her putting the oil on my forehead and all of the rituals that Pentecostal people are involved in, taking me to the church and all of those things. And I'm very grateful for that. I mean, if there's any conscious that I have developed, my mom helped contribute to that. However, the religion alone did not stop a lot of troubles that my mom would end up being involved with. Now, my grandmother, on the other hand, there's a lot of troubles that you are going to experience without any religion. So see, you got that imbalance there. However, combined, both of these women assisted in my life as my blood relative Blood relatives, let me add an S on that. I'm going to leave any of them out um, to help me where I'm at. So, okay, here I am. I'm an adult. I'm a woman now. How do I navigate and how do I deal with religion at this point? What does it mean? And this is what I've learned. You know, <laughs> And you got religions. I mean, you got Christians, you got Muslims, you got Buddhists, Catholics, Hindus. You got so many different variations of religions. You got non-denominational churches. But this is the thing you're going to learn and that I've learned. I've oftentimes been surprised of the heart of people or people that are in a religion. And it don't matter how many times they pray per day. It never ceased to amaze me of the lack of empathy that's involved. Like, okay, you think, okay, somebody pray four or five times a day and they're hearing about any abuse that's happening to anybody. And their first response is, is it a relative? Okay, as a spiritual man or woman, when you are hearing about the abuse of anyone, it really doesn't fucking matter. If it's a relative or if it's not, you'll be surprised of the selfishness of people. Some I'm praying five to 10 times a day but they still got this fucked up state of mind to the point where, and this is why I'm going more and more solo because 
What you don't want to do is cuss these religious people out. And you just get tired of their lack of empathy. Like, you know, just the responses when you have empathy, it can make you so fucking upset, you know, because there's people, it's just like, if you know something has happened to an elderly person and you're like, well, we need to maybe call adult protective services. What do we do? This elderly person is laying in bed sores. This is an elderly man or woman. I've known this elderly man or woman, however long. The religious narcissist could even know this. And the first fucking thing come out their mouth is, is this your mother or father? And as an empath, this is why we don't get along with a lot of people. You thinking to your fucking self, does it fucking matter, bitch? Does it fucking matter, bitch, if this is my fucking mother or father? I just told you that the fucking person is laying in bed sores and they could die, they're coughing or whatever. And sometimes it's vice versa. It's the child that's in harm's way. And if you're talking to a man and he's a cold-hearted fucker, you're thinking to yourself, because the man is saying, okay, well, is this your mom or dad? And you thinking, ninja, does it really fucking matter? And so a lot of times what will really, really bother you the most is this is a religious motherfucker with this state of mind. This is somebody that just came out of prayer, right? That it ain't nothing in no Bible or any religious book telling you to only help the people of the religion. But in some religious books, there's some indications that that is what you're supposed to do. And that's the problem with some of these religious books. And I'm just going to say this, okay? And this is no disrespect towards any Muslim. But there's a lot of things in the Quran that can kind of hint around or indicate these particular things you're only supposed to do for other Muslims. And that's a freaking lie. I'm just going to say it. I don't care who they claim and wrote it. We are not just here to assist Muslims. If you're claiming to be a Muslim man or woman, that's a damn lie. Whoever wrote that shit is a fucking lie because it's several suas in the Quran. And that's one thing I'm going to give the Bible props for over the Quran. You know, Jesus Christ said, help all people in need. It shouldn't matter whether they are Muslim or not. And so what happens is, especially for Muslims, they find it difficult because of that reading to have empathy for others. And that's why I'm going to be honest with you, because remember, I told you earlier, this is just my opinion. Some of the most kindest people that I've ever met were Christians. And this is why, even though biblically, it does not tell you from what I word, from what I word, I apologize, from what I read to call yourself a Christian, people do it and they can call themselves whatever they want to. But sometimes I've had a better experience because the Christian person that's trying to follow the religion they believe in kind Christ-like behavior. And the Bible is telling them to love your enemies, be kind. So if a Christian person or a person that attends a church believes that and they follow that, they follow that teaching, they may be able to have more empathy versus in religions like Islam, when you're reading suas that's telling you 
only love Muslims, only do this, you know, whatever is saying to only feel about a Muslim, you know, don't, there's one suit that kind of says, don't hang around people that's non-Muslims. And I don't believe in none of that. I believe in hanging around people based on their character because I used the example earlier. I have friends that are non-religious, which means they've never signed up for any of it. And when I tell you this, I'm just going to be honest with you. Most of them ain't never gave me no problems because, see, they don't have all these hangups. They were naturally kind. And a lot of them came from religious parents, even though they didn't sign up for the religion themselves. And so with that being said, and then, you know, I've been around Catholics. You know, you got this a whole nother type of thing with Catholics. Um, there's so many different rituals and the way they do things in the Catholic religion. It's his own thing, you know, but I can't say in general that Catholics have given me a big problem. But the problem with the Catholic religion is you got to really study into the paganism and things like that. And a lot of these religions have a lot of paganistic things that are inclusive in the religion, but the big top ones, you know, you as far as Islam and Christianity, it's so many things that you got to figure out how to become a better person. And the problem that I've had with religious people is to be honest, and I ain't saying I'm no better, but a lot of times my empathy comes so natural because it's just from the heart. Like, you don't need to tell me that I'm not going to ask you. Like, I mean, sometimes people just need help. I mean, if there's an elderly abuse situation or a child abuse situation, I have not to this day ever called Child Protective Services on anyone. To this day, I just haven't had to. I, till this day, have never called adult protective services for any elderly or adult abuse. I have not to this day. However, would the Lord ever put me in a position where I had to? If it came to that and it was severe enough, I would do it. However, when you're discussing these type of situations with religious people, their concerns are so selfish. Is it your family? Is it your mom and dad? Is it actually your child or your grandchild or your niece or nephew? A lot of that don't matter. A lot of children and adults that have been saved from very abusive situations, a lot of times it was a stranger that called and reported it. A lot of times the report is not even from someone they know. However, as you live, and a lot of people do not deal with people that go to churches or mass jets. They really kind of back off from these kind of people because what you learn as you endeavor and get involved in these situations or how can I word this? Understanding the endeavors of people in general, you learn that they ain't about shit. And you learn that there's so much more that must be done than just praying two times a day, three times a day, four times a day, five times a day. And you'll be surprised, like some of the shit people do you be like, damn, you just came out of prayer with that kind of heart. And you don't say it, but you really be thinking it. You know, and you're going to find that um, your heart is just different because empathy ain't really nothing you pray upon. And that's the problem. You know, a lot of times people are joining religions so that they can somehow be a better person. 
And you will notice that they don't become one and they can't become one because it's not a good heart and soul just ain't nothing that you pray upon. I mean, you can pray to become better and you can pray to become a better person, but you will notice that they just don't know how to properly love. And what I suggest for a lot of people that's left churches, I was just watching a video yesterday and the pastor is teaching people that he wished God would have made it a A, B, C, D situation talking about sexuality. Like he wished God just would have made it easier. And that's another thing too. Pastors in churches, they're sending people to the pit of hell, not being honest with them. And the gentleman that was doing the reaction on the video said that if he went to any church that said what that pastor said, that was kind of encouraging the alternative lifestyle, I think inclusive of marrying the same sex, he would leave that church. And see, that's a lot of the problem. Pastors don't understand what their job is, you know, and that makes people leave churches too, because your job ain't to stand up there and tell people that they can fuck whoever they want to fuck, never get married. You wish God or the Lord would have said we could be gay, transgender. That ain't your fucking job. A pastor's job is to teach the word. And I'm sorry for the profanity. And that's where I could actually say, now, I'm not approving of this, you know, I mean, in Afghanistan, you got the Taliban and all that shit. You're not bringing that transgender and all that overly gay shit in Afghanistan. But see, a lot of Christians will judge Muslims. But I don't see too many freaking Muslims. I ain't seen one Muslim yet. That's a man dressed as a fucking woman. So see. You got to recognize the strengths in every religion. And I'm just going off what I've observed. There's strengths and weaknesses in every religion, but this is the number one weakness for all of it. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I study a lot. And this is the weakness in all these religions. The worshiping of prophets and the overly respect of any prophet no matter who you think the prophet or the son of the lord is it can get in the way of your relationship with the lord because of the prophet's background and the denial of what a lot of these prophets did rape murder they were warriors, they were slave owners. And this justification of what some of these evil men did that claimed they were prophets, okay? And so this is where, as far as the most legitimate character, you will find through study, it may be Jesus Christ or the name they told you, which actually that's not his Hebrew name. So see, we got all these lies involved, all these lies of he's Jesus versus J-E-S-U-S. -S, that's actually Jesus in Spanish, right? So, you know, it's coming out of what people named or what Jesus' real name was. And I think the closest to being what his real name was, probably what a lot of people call him, Yahshua, or however they word it. I mean, but if you're traditionally using Jesus, that's fine. But Jesus is about the only one 
out of all the men and women in these biblical references that was not considered a warrior, murderer, child rapist, and any of that. So that's why when I said earlier, my life experience, the most kindest nature I have seen is from someone that called themselves a Christian. That's if they were obeying it. Now I've been around super kind Muslims too. However, those Muslims became more relaxed and not extreme in their religion. However, I studied and watched some videos and I'll never forget this one sister said in one of the videos, she was a Muslim sister from a Muslim family. And one of the things she said that stuck in my mind, she said it amazed her the evil things some of them could do right after prayer. And I would have to agree with that. The brothers and sisters I'm around that are Muslims is not so much evil things. It's how you could have that kind of heart after prayer. Like how do you come out of prayer and you're focused on if this is a relative and someone needs help. Like there's this, I got to post this video I'm going to upload of this homeless lady that I'm working on assisting. I'm going to contact some politicians and stuff. This lady lays out on this ground and it's cold and she's out there by herself. She's smart enough. She lays under the camera, but I mean, it's not a bunch of homeless people laying around in the suburb that I'm in. It's mainly just her out there. So to me, it's not that hard as a community to get this one lady off the ground. I don't know the lady personally. I just know that she appears to be schizophrenic because she talks to herself, but who knows? She may not be schizophrenic. She may be talking to herself because she's troubled and nervous because she sleeps out there in the cold all night. I mean, it could be a nervous system disorder. I don't know what's fully wrong with her, I have a family here, so I have to be safe. I don't know this woman and I'm not trying to bring anybody in that's gone off me or my family members. I wish I had more support to bring her in. It just seems wrong to leave her out there like that, right? Um, and I'm going to try to get some help for her. And it's a freaking shame. I mean, if this help works, that I'm going to try to navigate into this homeless lady's life. It's a freaking shame that she laid out there all that time and nobody really tried to make no real calls for. Her. Some people probably don't know what calls to make. And I'm not somebody that's at a church or a mosque or a synagogue every day or every other day. Me being on this channel, believe it or not, even though you hear me cussing sometimes and I'm sorry for that, this is part of my spirituality, doing these videos. And a lot of people be like, well, it's Bible reading time, it's Quran reading time. That's fine. You could read it all day or night. Who you helping? Who you helping though? Other than yourself. Because when you read that and you reading the same thing over and over, I got to do more, y'all. I got to come on here and teach you something, right? It's so much more. And I can't be involved in no religion too heavily that's telling me a woman is not capable of teaching and helping because that's a lie too. Half the stuff that even in religion men have been pulled out of or saved from, a lot of times the root of that was the help of a woman. Or a lot of times the trouble that men came into biblically 
women hurt their lives. See, it can go either way. It's, it just is about the type of woman that's helping or hurting. Same thing with the women. If they acquired the right king, they became a queen. Or did they get involved with a peasant that was troubled? You know, because the peasants hadn't acquired what a king had. Some kings were peasants first. It just depends, okay? So, and you can study on some of that. I mean, in my mind, I don't look down on anybody, but there's a lot of slavery that existed in all religious books. There ain't no such thing as no happy slave. I don't believe in any of that because a slave itself is an imbalance of power and it's a situation that's um, conditional. It's not unconditional. It's based on how you submit. And if you decide you don't want to be a slave no more, it normally does not go well for you. In most cases, no matter where the slavery existed, whether it be the Arabs that had slaves, the European Americans that had slaves, at the end of the day, both of them owned many races of slaves, especially black slaves. That's how I look at it. Like if you black, you just wasn't subjected to slavery from white men. I mean, they had your way over in Arab countries enslaving you. So you were subjected to slavery all over basically. And so that's just what I've learned. I mean, I've, I've been around a lot of different religions. I've signed up for religions and I'm learning more and more to look at, okay, because these prophets or whatever, you know, a lot of these prophets were murderers. They just were. And so you condition yourself to follow these men and women of the Bible. And a lot of times they lived way worse lives. And so you got to not be afraid to create your own type of worship. And see, that's what we're afraid to do. We're afraid to say, well, you know, I was raised as a Christian and I was taught to do it this way. I was raised as a Muslim or whatever your religion is. I was raised as a Buddhist. So I was taught to do it this way. And I believe you just got to get your hours in with the Lord. You know, like I've been on this video 33 minutes and I've been on this bike and I'm going to be in repentance for the profanity. However, overall, I'm in obedience with pretty much my commandments and the way I'm supposed to do things. And in Islam, they would call these things haram. So I try to avoid things that are haram, which is the forbidden. Biblically, I try to avoid things that would be considered violations of the Ten Commandments. I try to do these things to the best of my ability. However, in my life, I've been encouraged by people that are deep in their religions, but I've also been hurt by people that are deep in their religions because their religion alone can't make them have empathy. Because I do believe empathy is a brain process also, and it's a heart process that comes from nature. Basically, it's kind of like this, y'all. It's kind of like good genes and bad genes, right? Some babies were just sparked with a naturally good heart from birth. And there's certain things about me that I can say in these areas, I've been sparked with a good heart. Like, don't give me no billions of dollars. You just can't give me billions of dollars because less of these homeless people would be laying out here on the ground. I mean, 
You just couldn't give me that amount of money because there's so many things I would do. And it would create so much change that a lot of people would know I did that activity just because the situation changed. Like you would walk through here and say, well, how did this lady get off this sidewalk? I wish this was like the old little house on the prairie days where I had a man with a bunch of horses outside and a bunch of sons with some suspenders and farmer john pants on and i could just say let's go get this lady let's put her in the back of the wagon let's house her let's give her the back house or whatever and take care of her but see we're in 2023 that just ain't how that shit happens i go get this lady me and my baby boy we go by ourselves and get this lady and you may never hear another video again because this lady done stabbed me in my ass and my babies and the pets or whatever else was up in here. So you got to be realistic. And it's so much worship of all of these men and women in the Bible. It so gets in the way of real worship obedience and discipline and you just gotta watch who you follow if i know my neighbor up the street then kill 200 people in cold blood i mean is he a prophet is she a prophet so we just gotta really evaluate some of these things i mean and for a lot of christians they don't evaluate Jesus walking around saying he's God. Like you really got to do more research on these issues. That's all I'm saying. And be aware of what both books say or other religious books. Learn about Buddhism. And see, that's why I'm so less judgmental a lot of times. Because if it's working for you, it works for you. Your destiny will be your destiny. However, I got to basically stick to this one point. Your religion, my religion, and their religion will not make them any better of a person if they're not actively doing something in life that's actually helping people. And I mean really helping people, like you gotta be actively outside of what you claim is your religion, helping people. And you gotta remember this, there will be religious narcissists. And that will be the worst narcissist out there because a religious narcissist is what the word or the bible says that the lord hates the most and that is a hypocrite they will be the most disobedient to kindness they won't know how to be kind they will always lack empathy a religious narcissist is your enemy right before you because they're able to preach about the Lord and hold hate, jealousy, and envy in their hearts for you. So many people have gotten religious narcissists out of their life. So many people have left churches and mass jids. And until they left some of these churches and mass jids, they couldn't even really have a super close relationship with the Lord or better their life and get the hell away from these toxic people. Religious narcissists will know your daughters and sons died and they won't contact you. Religious narcissists won't give a fuck in the real sense of the word and excuse the profanity. I've been around religious narcissists. I've seen them throughout my life. 
many of them I've disconnected from and I was able to at that point actually think for myself really realize what's right and wrong really allow my good heart to work for me really being able to protect myself physically from danger keeping danger out of my environment sometimes religious narcissists will tell you to keep the devil around so be careful okay Beware of religious narcissists and learn to really embrace what your spirituality should be and learn to be a prophet yourself. A prophet is someone that speaks on the behalf of the Lord. Learn to be more of that. And then you can go on your journey to heaven or hell in islam they would call heaven jana so you can be on that journey to whatever you call heaven and hell in buddhism they have another term for what they believe is their kind of heaven and hell i don't remember what the name of that is because i'm not a buddhist so i love y'all so so much please like share and subscribe please leave a comment and I hope this perspective kind of helps and protects you on your journey to correct spirituality and you will know what that is. And I pray that it gets better. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a great comment. Video ideas, put them in the comments if you have any. And I appreciate you so, so much. Tune in for more here with Advanced Insight. Thank you. Bye.